The cross is a sign of judgment. You don't hear this quite a lot, but the cross is a sign of judgment because it wraps around it all the wickedness, all the wretchedness of humanity. We spoke yesterday about sin, and sin entered the world from day one. When you read the story of the creation, when you read what happened to Adam and Eve, they listened to the advice of evil. There was a sense of betrayal between husband and wife. And that is such a bad thing for anyone to experience. And then we go to the next generation. What happens to the two brothers, Cain and Abel? They want to offer a sacrifice to God. The sacrifice of Abel is coming from his heart. God accepts that sacrifice. The sacrifice of Cain was half-baked. It wasn't something that was coming from the heart. God doesn't accept it. And he says, you need to do better. Now we have Abel, whose standard is pretty high, and Cain, who's doing a lousy job. So instead of Cain raising the bar, what does he do? He goes and he destroys what is the standard. He kills his brother. So betrayal, death, suffering. These are the manifestations of sin. And sin needs judgment. So the cross comes to separate the good from bad. But this doesn't happen from a way that Jesus stays above human suffering. When there is death, when there's destruction, when there's betrayal, when sin happens, do you think people are happy usually? We are the survivors and sometimes the victims of the Armenian genocide. How do you think that has affected us? It stays for generations and generations. We suffer. So Jesus comes and he identifies himself with the suffering. He could have said, I'm gonna eliminate sin. He could have said, I'm going to eliminate all kinds of sufferings. I guess that would have been easy. But he comes and he identifies himself with human pain and human suffering. And with that, he gives us salvation. So that every time we look at the crucifix, and that crucifix, by the way, is from our church. When we have pain, when we have suffering, we know that we are not alone. We see the tremendous love that God has for us. And when we look at the cross, and this is the third and the final point, we know that there's a way that we need to follow. And that way is to live for the greater good. It's so easy to live for here and now. It's so easy to do the things that will give us pleasure in life but it's very difficult for, to live for the greater good. And the cross gives us direction. I will tell you a little story that comes from the lives of one of the saints. There was this guy whose mission was to work with orphan kids, kids who were charged with misdemeanor, kids were, that the society wouldn't want to do anything with them. And he had gathered those children and he was providing care for them and you know when people grow up in broken families when people go through the human suffering we become bitter and those children most of the time were very bitter they wouldn't appreciate the things that this person was doing for them and he felt that he can use some help. So he contacted his mom and said, Mom, why don't you come and help me? She agreed. And she came. You know, this, this was a senior lady. She came and she started working with, with the orphans. Initially, everything felt very good. But then after a week or two, she felt exhausted because those kids <laughs> they were really, really exhausting her. To a point that she went to her son and said, I tried to help you. It's been two weeks, but I, I don't think I can do this anymore. 
I'm going to go back to my village and I'm going to do the little things that I did and I'm going to find peace and quiet in my life. And she said, of course, mom, you can do whatever you want. But before you go, I'd like you to look at the crucifix. I'd like you to look at Jesus on the cross and then make your final decision. When she looked at the sacrifice that Jesus did on the cross for us, she said, I have to stay. I have to stay and I have to continue my mission. Every one of us in our lives, we encounter the cross of Jesus and we need to make a decision. This has been a great weekend. Today, you know, we're almost at the end of the weekend. We learned about Badarak. We played some games. You guys did a wonderful job singing and dancing yesterday. I'm sure you enjoyed um, the basketball games. When you go home, I'm sure you're going to say a lot about the Chorex that our wonderful ladies served you. But I want you to remember that this was a weekend that not only you learn about Badarak, but you immerse yourself as we celebrated Badarak today. This is full access, no curtain, nothing. You can see whatever is happening here. And you learn also that there's a different way of living. And that way of living is called the way of the cross. May God bless you. I hope and I pray that as you encounter the cross, you will say yes to the message of the cross.